Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel, we discuss tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video, we're gonna do some dog breeding business Q&A. This is where we answer questions that you folks have been asking on the channel. Let's get to it. All right, lots of questions going on on the channel. Uh, let, let's get to a few of them here. Uh, Lacey Looper writes in, uh, and this is a, a question about whelping pads from, from one of the puppy videos, um, the, the newborn Labrador puppy video specifically. Uh, and Lacey asks, how often do you change out the pads? Uh, well, the day that M Mama Dog has all those puppies on whelping day, that pad's gonna be a wreck. <laughs> and you're gonna have to change it out probably a couple of times that day. Uh, but uh, assuming that we're talking about maintenance at this point, you know, now that the puppies are born and, and you're just looking at mama dog and a bunch of puppies sleeping and nursing and sleeping and nursing, that's pretty much how their first two weeks goes, um, at, at least once a day. Um, you're gonna find that mama dog does an amazing job of keeping the nest clean. Um, she, she really does. And newborn puppies don't really make a whole lot of mess anyways. Uh, now, as they get older, that's, that's gonna change. Uh, but at least once a day, I, I always have at least two so that you can have one in the washer and, and one in the whelping pen. Um, more than two is fine, absolutely. At least once a day in the beginning, uh, and that'll start to become twice a day and then as needed as the puppies get older. Um, when they get up to about two weeks old, their eyes are gonna open up, they're gonna start roaming around a little bit in between weeks two and three. Uh, they're going to be getting on uh, mush or mash, and we've got a video about that. I'll put a card in here. Uh, and when that happens and they start eating solid food, uh, then uh, the messes are going to become bigger and more frequent, and you're probably be looking at more like twice a day at that, at that point, uh, sometimes even a little bit more than that. But uh, for the first couple of weeks, at least once a day. Um, but be ready for twice a day in case you need to. Great question. Uh, now, Lacey had also asked in here, um, uh, what type of dewormer do we use and how much? Now, uh, we use the, the Nemex 2 dewormer, um, and I'll put a link in this video that'll, that'll take you right to it on Amazon, and you can also find it on the tools page, on the, the recommended products and tools page on our website, by the way, at mustlovelabs.com. Uh, but we use the Pfizer Nemex 2, uh, and that's a half a cc per pound. Uh, and they get that at weeks two, three, four, six, eight, ten, like that. That's 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 how you do it, uh, and that that works out pretty good. And those instructions actually came from my vet, by the way. I didn't just make that up, uh, and and that works out pretty good for Labrador puppies. Uh, I have a CC per pound uh, on the puppies, and weeks two, three, four, six, eight, ten, like that. Great question. Uh, by the way, if, if you're a new breeder or even an experienced breeder, and you've been doing it a while and you find yourself having a bunch of questions coming up, you watch the videos, and another question, another question, another question, jot them down, uh, and you can schedule a coaching session with me. Uh, there's a page on our website at mustlovelabs.com that's about coaching, the coaching tab. You can click on that and fill out the form, and uh, you can schedule an hour with me, uh, and we'll sit down and address your list of questions specifically and have a great chat about, about dog breeding. And uh, we, we've had some pretty good some success with that. I got a few people that have taken me up on that, and so far everybody's pretty happy we did it. So something to think about, the coaching tab at mustlovelabs.com. Hey folks, if you're getting value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help out quite a bit, and thanks in advance for doing that. Okay, next question here. Um, Hiram Quinones had asked, uh, he says, thanks for sharing, talking about the puppy marketing video that we did. Uh, he says he's starting a new business and was wondering what else other than a receipt should he give a new owner when he or she comes to visit the puppies and make a deposit on one. Um, at, at that point in the process, all you really need to give them is a receipt. Um, and and you, you, know, you need to write down which puppy they picked, which is what the collar colors are all about. Uh, lots of different ways to label your puppies, I suppose. We use colored collars to do it. Um, uh, but all they really need is a receipt for the deposit. Uh, I wouldn't give them anything more than that, really, uh, because for one thing, they haven't taken ownership of the puppy. That comes later. 
Uh, we keep puppies here until they're eight weeks old. They stay with, uh, with the mama dog and with us here at the kennel. Um, for one thing, they can't fly until after they're eight weeks old. So uh, if you're going to be shipping one, then that's an issue right there. So, uh, and the industry standard is eight weeks. So now once somebody comes to pick up their puppy uh, and they have paid you in full, however you're going to handle that transaction, uh, at that point is when you give them their paperwork packet and a welcome kit, whatever you feel like putting in there. Uh, the, the registration paperwork, you know, with AKC dogs and whatnot, uh, as well as a, 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 a final receipt showing that they paid in full, that kind of thing. Shot records, uh, health letter from the vet if you did that, and I recommend you do. Uh, these kinds of things. But in the beginning, when they've just first come to exercise their pick, like say their, you know, second pick female or whatever, uh, and they give you a deposit and get on the pick list, you just need to give them a, a, a receipt for the deposit, and, and that would be about it at that stage. Great question. Okay, next question. Uh, Rocky Zilla here writes in, says he has doubts about whether to start with a single female dog or start with a, a pair, of a male and a female. Um, excellent question. Uh, there's pros and cons for both. A lot of people do start with uh, one female dog. Um, it's not too difficult in most cases to, to find a, a, a stud somewhere, somebody that's offering stud service if you like to look at their dog and you can come to terms on a price uh, for the stud service. That's, that's not a bad way to start. Um, some people like to pick up a pair of dogs, uh, like our Sam and Rosie, for instance. Um, and I can tell you that with a pair, if you choose to do that, I actually recommend you get the female first and let her get to be about a year old. Uh, at least a year old, and then go pick up your male puppy. This is assuming that you're buying dogs as puppies, which is what I do. I buy puppies. Uh, I, I don't buy adult dogs from anybody. Um, and the reason that I say this is the male is going to be ready to breed at about nine months. Okay, female, you really need to wait till she's closer to two. Uh, long about the third heat cycle is normal for Labradors, which is what I'll reference because that's what we do here. Um, so you can have a male dog that's ready to go nine months, 10 months, 11 months, right in there. Uh, and if you staggered them out about a year or a little bit more, then your female will be getting pretty close to her third heat cycle coming up on two years old and the timing will work out. Uh, you see what I'm saying? The, the males are always ready and that's fine. Uh, as long as you know their sperm is viable and you always have your vet check on that, by the way. Um, so. Stagger them out a little bit, get the female first, that's a great plan. If you just want to start out with a female uh, and, and outsource, outsource your stud service, find somebody that's got a stud that you want to, to do business with, that's fine too. Uh, personal choice, I like doing my own dogs, um, but you may not want to. Some people don't want to deal with having a stud dog around, they just want to have a female around. Uh, I know a couple of breeders that all they keep is females. Uh, they, they don't want to deal with stud dogs. <laughs> they come with their own set of challenges. Uh, I've got a video in here about dealing with a stud dog, by the way. We, we uh, did a little bit of documentation with Sam. Uh, I'll put a card in here for that. Feel free to check that out. Great question. Okay, Blessed Are the Flexible asks, um, with regards to the puppy rail, you guys have probably seen the, uh, that, that black piece of four inch drain that we put around the edge of the whelping pool. Uh, that's the puppy rail. Uh, she asked, how far off the pool floor should that be? Three inches? Um, yes, absolutely. Two to three inches is fine, right in there. And what we're doing here is we're creating space for a puppy to get underneath that rail. Um, uh, the purpose for that rail um, is so that the mama dog doesn't lay up against that puppy and smother it while she's sleeping. They're exhausted after whelping. Uh, it, it's a lot of work, as we all know, and it's easy for them to fall asleep on a puppy and suffocate them before they wake back up from a nap. And that puppy rail gives the puppies a place, uh, a room to live, basically, uh, a, a little space where, where mama can't push on them and they can just lay in there and sleep just like she is, and they'll wake up later when she goes looking for them. Now, that's the whole point. Uh, so two to three inches keeping that rail above the pool floor two to three inches is, is just perfect and it'll work out uh, and do just what you want it to do. Great question. Well, that wraps up this week's Q&A video. 
If you'd like to watch our playlist that has all of our Q&A videos, I'll put that up right here. And if you'd like to watch our playlist for how to become a dog breeder, I'll put that up right here. You can always visit us on the web at mustlovelabs.com. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.